Welcome to today's DIY project. We're going to do a little bit of upholstering just to freshen up these chairs to be more in keeping with their new decorated surroundings. When these chairs get recovered, they're also going to have a little bit of extra padding put on. The padding on these is quite thin and it's not very comfortable. For the additional comfort, I'm going to use this foam. It's four centimeters thick or an inch and a half. This didn't actually cost anything. This was part of the packaging that was on our new sofas. So there's no point in throwing this out. It would just as well utilize it and use it. For the coverings, I bought some materials off of eBay. That's going to be put on top of some thick backing. I'll explain the reasons for that later. As a general buying guide, if you're purchasing materials, you usually buy it off a roll that's 1.4 meters long and the minimum you can purchase is a meter in depth. If you've always wanted to do a little project like this but you don't have the confidence, stick with me and I'll show you how. To complete this project, we will need some tools. Tools for removing, tools for measuring and cutting, and tools for sticking. In order to determine what size staples you need, all you need to do is remove one from your project and measure it. I flip the chair up on top of a bench just to make it easier and I can instantly see that all I need to do to remove the seats is to remove these four screws. I don't want to remove all of this covering I just need to remove this base in order that I can tack it back on afterwards and make it look like a half tidy job. To remove the staples, all we need to do is push our screwdriver underneath, lever him up, and then remove it with our pliers. To save time, I've gone round first with the screwdriver. I've loosened all of the relevant staples to make it a little bit quicker. You will get the odd fiddly one. It just takes a little bit more effort. I've removed all the excess staples. I'll put them all in a cup just to keep them all in one place and keep it all tidy. Let's take them off and see what we've got. The big reveal. We can see we've got all this original plastic here. I'm going to rip this off, tidy it up a bit, and then we'll move on to the next step. Here's a top tip for you. If you've not done this before and you're unsure of how to reattach like new material, all you need to do is study what's been done before, uh, take pictures if you need to. That will then give you a good idea of how the corners were stapled down. From this, you can see this material's just been pulled, tucked and stapled. You can see by this, I've been trying to work out how to get two seats out of this spare foam. So I've kind of drawn around and I'm a little bit short, but that's okay. What we're gonna do, we're gonna improvise. What I'm gonna actually do is cut the foam short at the back. And that shouldn't make any difference whatsoever in what we're trying to achieve. And that way we can get two pieces of seat out of the one piece of foam. This is looking a bit more complicated than it actually is. Once I've made a cut along here and separated the two pieces, I should then know exactly where I'm going. Obviously, I'm using a scrap piece of foam. If you were to buy foam for yourself, you'd obviously buy foam that's a completely the right size and you've also got some excess. I've got a board here, which I'm gonna slip underneath. just so that I don't cut into my worktop. This is where you need this type of cutting tool. It's got snap off blades, but what I want to do is use the whole length of the blade so it's thick enough to go through the foam. 
and we'll just slice through him nice and gently just trim that little bit there and that's giving us a nice clean cut take your time with this don't need to rush it you know when you're through because you can feel the blade on the hard surface underneath I want to use this piece of foam as a template so I've made a mark on both sides so I don't forget. You can see from this now that I've got a template. It's a nice simple process to mark out the other seats. When you're cutting, try and make long sweeping strokes. And follow the line. Okay. then you'll get a nice edge to get a rounded corner all I'm going to do is cut straight down And that should give you a reasonable corner. I can also trim it down this way a little if I wish. Just to get the shape. Try not to be shaving off little bits off the edge. Because it just gets a little bit messy. Well that's our six pieces of foam cut. There's little tiny bits of variation. But I'm not overly bothered about that. That one there is the roughest one. That was the first one that we did before we made the template. So now I want to fix the sponge to the existing seat. And the reason for that is I don't want it moving around. We're going to use this stuff. It's like an adhesive spray. I didn't need to use a massive amount it was just enough to get this sponge to stick on there and stop it falling off when I move it around this is a tough upholstery material this is going to go on first and what that's going to do that's going to pull all this sponge down and give it a really nice shape it's going to hold it all nice and firm and nice and tight the second reason I bought this as a backing is that when I put the main material on the top I don't have to go stretching it all over the place I can just basically put it on top of the shape and it will look nice and tidy there's probably other ways of doing this but this is the way that I'm going about it you're probably thinking to yourself hang on a minute I don't want to spend £20 on a stapler if you think about it say the cost of the materials and everything else and the tools came to around 70 pounds then I don't know how much it is to get chairs reupholstered but I've got six of them I can't see an upholsterer doing six for 70 pounds so I've got a massive saving personally I didn't mind the outlay for a stapler and a cutting tool obviously if you can beg or borrow one of these you're gonna have more of a saving Well, I made a bit of a faux pas. I bought these because this was the only ones they had in the shop and it said there for Stanley TR. This stapler is uh, a Stanley TR, but it's a 150 OHL. These don't fit. The size looks exactly right, 5 sixteenths and 8 mil as it says on there but they just don't fit so i've had to go out and buy some of the specific stanley ones i hope that helps you so you don't get caught out as well
Now all we need to do now is simply tack him down nice and tight. You can see from this the way I've cut him I've got very little excess to play with. Really push him down and get a couple of staples in. If we pull him down tight that will give us a nice shape. Put him in from the side. I kind of got a bit of a ruckle here, so I need to sort this out. So what we do is we'll just take this out of here, this staple. Smooth him out and we'll go again. This is where the magic happens. I've got my top layer of material all cut. What I'm going to do to finish the corners is do it slightly different to how it was originally. I put the corner there and what I'm going to do is just bring that in and I think that will look much tidier as a finish. That looks like a nice tidy corner. I'm fairly okay with that effort. What I'm going to do is replace the original backing just to help tidy it up a bit. I know this material is a bit shot away but I just thought it might finish it off as I don't have anything else. Welcome to another day. If you remember at the beginning of the video, I showed you some material, which is like thick covering material that I was gonna put on first. If you're wondering if it's a bit overkill or whether it's required or not, have a look at this. What I've done, I just covered this in the colored material with no backing, just so you can see the difference It's all very loose and you can kind of feel where everything goes. Over here it's given us a nice smooth finish. I've made a bit of a faux pas. I didn't order enough backing material for all six chairs. I've only got enough for four. So I'll cover the four I've got. I'll show you what they look like and I'll finish these at some point when I've ordered some more. So there you have it, we've added a bit of colour and cushioning to our seats for very little money. So you can see from what we've done 
there's no reason why you can't try this at home hopefully seeing me do this has given you the confidence to do it for yourself thanks for watching i'll see you on the next project info shared out